Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, do personality disorders improve, worsen, or stay the same as people age? If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss any new videos. So when we talk about personality disorders and how they change over time, it's important to recognize, first of all, that the prevalence of personality disorders in the general population is around 10 to 15 percent. And this prevalence rate is stable across all of the age categories. Now, a lot of times when an individual has one personality disorder, they do have comorbid mental disorders. Some of those are personality disorders sometimes, and sometimes we see other disorders like major depressive disorder or substance use disorder. So just because an individual has one personality disorder doesn't necessarily mean they don't have other disorders. We conceptualize personality disorders as extreme personality traits, and we conceptualize personality traits as being relatively stable over time. So it would make sense to think of personality disorders as being stable over time. So if an individual is diagnosed with a personality disorder in early adulthood, it wouldn't be surprising that they would still have symptoms when they are in middle age and older age. To understand the course of personality disorders, it's important to understand the onset of personality disorders as they're conceptualized in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM. If we look at the DSM, we see there are 10 personality disorders. And for each of these 10 personality disorders, the symptoms would have had to have been present before or during early adulthood. This means there is no such thing as a late onset personality disorder if we're going strictly by what's in the DSM. Now, of course, many theorists disagree with this and believe that personality disorders can form later in life, but even then, this is fairly restricted. We believe this would be a small number of people that could have a late onset of a personality disorder. So this particular circumstance of potential late onset isn't really throwing off the prevalence numbers. Again, this would be a small number of people, if any. Now, when we talk about prevalence, though, it's important to remember that sometimes a personality disorder could be missed when somebody's younger, and it could be diagnosed when they're in middle age or an older age. So we could still see a higher prevalence of a personality disorder in older age categories, even though the symptoms theoretically would have had to have been there the whole time along. There is only a little research available about how personality disorders affect older adults and how personality disorders progress from younger adults to middle age to older age. So we don't have a lot of information, although there are some studies that are going on now that will hopefully give us more information about the effects of personality disorders in older age and the potential progression of personality disorders. So when we consider personality disorders as a whole, we look at all 10 of them, we divide them into three categories. These are the personality disorder clusters cluster A, B, and C. Cluster A contains the odd eccentric personality disorders. That would be paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal. Cluster B contains the dramatic, emotional, and erratic personality disorders. So here we would see antisocial personality disorder, borderline, narcissistic, and histrionic personality disorders. Cluster C is the anxious, fearful cluster. And this has avoidant, dependent, and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. It's important to remember that obsessive compulsive personality disorder is a different mental disorder than obsessive compulsive disorder. The names are similar, but OCPD, the personality disorder, is a separate construct. So when we look at the research that is available and we look at the progression of personality disorders over time, we know that for cluster A personality disorders, the prevalence tends to increase with age. And the severity, frequency, and duration of the symptoms also tends to increase by a small amount. In some studies, it's shown as staying relatively stable. Now, the cluster B personality disorders, the prevalence decreases with age. And the symptom, severity, frequency, and duration also decrease. We see the most decrease with antisocial and borderline personality disorders. With cluster C personality disorders, we see an increased prevalence with age, and we see an increase 
and severity, frequency and duration with age as well. Now, similar to the cluster A personality disorders, some research indicates that cluster C personality disorders really don't change much. So some have an increase and some show the symptoms as relatively stable. Now we look at personality disorders as individuals age, it's also important to remember that some symptoms may improve or worsen and other symptoms will stay the same. So if we look at borderline personality disorder, for example, we know that impulsivity tends to improve, meaning less impulsivity, and relationships tend to improve, but other areas like anger don't tend to change. So you have to look at each symptom when you look at potential changes over the lifetime. Now there are a number of theories as to why we see personality disorders change over time the way we do. One theory is that when individuals can actively engage in relationships, they have a better chance of improving. And with the cluster B personality disorders, we know that relationships are a struggle, but usually individuals with cluster B personality disorders still reach out and try to form relationships. We don't see that as much with cluster A personality disorders and cluster C personality disorders. Another theory is that personality disorders would generally tend to improve, including all three of the clusters, but certain transitions that occur later in life become obstacles to improvement, like retirement, health problems, having children grow up and move out of the house, a loss of a spouse, loss of parents, and financial difficulties. So as we consider the course of personality disorders over the lifetime, we have to be aware that the symptom criteria and the other criteria in the DSM may not fully take into account some of the transitions we see with older adults. And we have to be mindful of the issue I mentioned before about the DSM precluding late onset of personality disorders. So as it turns out, personality traits and personality disorders may change more than we think. We conceptualize them, as I mentioned, as quite stable, but changes do occur and research continues to find out why this is the case. I hope you found this description of the course of personality disorders to be interesting. Thanks for watching.